your biggest secret, Tom? That's David too. Yeah, what's your biggest secret? What's your biggest secret, Carl? Or maybe, um, Carl, what is your biggest secret? Hi, I'm Azara Barbe Brown, um, and I play Carla and Roxanne in David is Dying. Hi, I'm Lonyo Engele, and I play David Brown in David is Dying. My name is Bridget Miller, and I play Amelia Holland in. And David is dying. My name is Alan Seeley and I play the character of Jason in David is Dying. My name is uh, Stephen Lloyd Jackson and I was an um, executive producer, producer, writer and director of David is Dying. My name is David Brown, I'm 36 and I run DBR Hedge Fund Management Corporation. David is Dying came to me in two folds. Uh, a few years ago, I was, uh, I was doing research on, on psychological researches and I came across a story known as the Oedipus Complex um, or Oedipus Complex uh, written by Sophocles in the fifth century. Mm. And I found it a fascinating story. It was a story about a boy who by default fell in love with his mother and had the father killed. And um, this kind of phenomena was being researched by a lot, a lot of um, psychologists and psychiatrists of, of, of the day, and even in later 19th century. And um, it led to a, a, another story that I was doing, which was called The Pregnant Predator. It was about a young man that was going around sleeping with a lot of women, and um, causing a lot of mayhem, sexual mayhem. And um, basically, he contracted HIV and, um, you know, and he, 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 he was on his way to his demise. So I decided to merge the two stories together. And um, I wanted to do a modern spin on the Oedipus complex, but I also wanted to put in some extra strains to the story, you know, um, putting an extra spine to it. So um, as well at the time I was doing, um, I was thinking of doing a documentary on relationships where men and women, you know, they talk about their partners and um, the, the problems, the issues, the, the ups, the downs. So I wanted to do a conversational piece where we could have someone just talking, basically. So I merged everything together and came up with David is Dying. Yeah. With little Stephen, um, it was... It was, I never worked with uh, like a, a child before and it helped because he was directed, like he was, you know, director's son. So it wasn't, he was a complete stranger. <laughs> um, um, and before we even started filming, I actually went out with um, Stephen Lloyd Jackson, senior mm -hmm. <laughs> and junior um, to the park and we spent the day together and we like talked about football and played games and stuff like that. So at least he was used to me. And um I think when we came to actually filming the scenes, by that point, he was, I was very familiar to him at least anyway. So there was no awkward, you know, I felt very comfortable that he, like, I could like touch him and be quite motherly with him and he wouldn't like be weird about it. No, 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 it just came in on a day and I was actually dropping one of my friends off there as well. Um, so it was sort of um, fate, if you like, and, uh, I didn't know what to expect. I hadn't auditioned for a role before. Um, and I, I was sort of thinking, um, if, you, if you just go for it, you know, you've got nothing to lose, so um, give it a try. And then if you don't make it, then you can ask why it didn't happen and then you can find out the real uh, protocols for uh, casting. But it was just, just a, a stroke of luck, if you like. And uh, how does it feel once you get it, once you go for the role? Well, it was funny because I got offered the role and then um, when I got offered the role, I was happy, but then I was scared at the same time because 
you 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 realise that the realisation set in that you know I, I I was going to be the lead actor, and if I didn't deliver, <clears throat> all these people, the crew, the supporting cast were relying on me, so I I couldn't really afford to have a bad day. So there was that pressure, and then and then so a little bit of doubt set in, and I think Stephen picked up on that, and then we had a couple of heart to hearts, and he was like, look. If you think you can, you can do. I believe you can do it. And uh, if you if you do it, if you're able to do this film and do it well, then you can do anything. She's a multi-layered, multifaceted character. Sort of on the outside, she's very professional. She's highly educated, intelligent. She's a published author, and um, she's very professional. But underneath, there's a lot more going on. Underneath, she's really a mess, and she's falling apart. She observes David and she studies his character to see if he's a danger to himself or possibly to other people. And that's obviously her decision to make, to, to find out how this whole thing happened. So yes, in a way, she is asking him questions and trying to draw him out. And then she stands back and watches him to see how he reacts. I've always had the um, acting bug. I, um, from school, but I was kind of dissuaded from it and um, and then didn't have the confidence, but um, it always stayed with me. I love film and everything. And then about, it's been about five, six years, I decided to just go and do a course and see how I felt about it and how I was received and have a look back since. The one I'm inclined to the most is the Meisner technique. And um, I studied that um, in Los Angeles um, under Joanne Barron, who was a direct um, student of Sanford Meisner. And um, that technique in itself and, the, and learning it was um, tra life transformational for me. So I, I tend to, to draw on that skill quite a bit. Dumas, you'll be ready to go again in a bit. You know how to make me feel good about myself. You've really done a good job. And I mean, with you behind me. Dumas. Why stop here? And I mean, like, of, of, like. Dumas. I just want to know where my money's going, that's all. The way how I compose a movie um, in pre-production, you know, um, I, I, I give everybody the outline of the movie, you know, the script. We've got the blueprint, the script, basically. And um, it, it, it's a matter of us working together as a team. But um, essentially, you know, I've got to take the creative lead on stuff. And I would say, um, for example, with the cinema photography, I wanted the camera to breathe. I wanted it to have this, this natural kind of documentary feel to it. And um, I wanted certain shots to be out of focus, very soft, very um, um, me and Olympia, coined, uh, I don't know if we coined the phrase, but we would say we want a filthy screen or we want a dirty screen there. In other words, we don't want it to look clean and, you know, pristine and perfect. We wanted um, some of the character's um, body to be to one side of the frame and edgy. Um, they're very different. I think... To start with, my, I focus a lot more on Carla because I did, did a lot more of work like as her in the film. But with Roxanne, it was a lot harder because there was so much of her that was foreign to me. <laughs> um, like being, I'm, like, I'm not a mother. Um, she was uh, like French Caribbean. And I wasn't like, there's a lot of stuff that I wasn't. Um, and so with her, I think I, played around more with her. I kind of just, it wasn't a caricature of anything, but I kind of let my imagination kind of fill in a lot of the blanks. Mm -hmm. Whereas with Carla, I think she was a lot more personal to me because I think I could identify more with her, like a young woman. Um, I mean, I've never been in a relationship like that, but you know, not with a great guy. And you know, you can really identify with that a lot more. And with the art direction, you know, um, it, it's something where we would look at a lot, a, a lot of um, interior magazines and um, David's apartment. We wanted that to be 
um, a kind of minimalist feel to it. Not too minimalist, but this feel where he's kind of um, a compulsive person, where he's he, everything's in place and everything's in order because he's a person that likes control. Well, I think um, every guy has been in love at some stage and, uh, and might have gone through the misfortune of breaking up with someone. So uh, that's happened to me, obviously, at some point in my life. So it was it was easy to draw on some of the experiences that I'd gone through or, like I say, some of my friends had gone through. The HIV thing, um, I just did a bit of research on how people felt once they'd been told and the mental state they were going through as opposed to just the physical aspects because everyone concentrates on the physical aspect of losing weight and tiredness and and stuff. But for me, it was all about psychologically how that affected, you know, this, your, your psyche in being given everything, being told that you're, you, you're going to have a family and then to be cruelly, you know, tainted with, with the uh, news that you, you, you got HIV was a massive high and a massive low. So it was learning about how to portray that in the film. We wanted Carla to be a bit iconic. We wanted her makeup to be severe. We want because uh, she's involved in the art world. We wanted to create this kind of artistic, iconic business woman, someone who owns a gallery, someone who's smart and intelligent, who wears um, clothes that are not so much off kilter, but you know. It, it, it represents her personality. Now, I've noticed you only talk about your mother. What about your father? What working with Stephen was absolutely amazing. I really loved working with him. He is just, he has a really amazing vision of where he wants to go with the film and with the scenes. But at the same time, he gives you lots of scope um, where you want to take your character um, and how you want to approach the scene. So he's very interested in collaborating and working with the actor, even though he still has his vision that he never loses sight of. I'm greatly inspired by Ennio Morricone and his music, his works. And, and um, I remember seeing him in concert up in 2006, I believe, when he was in London. And I just said, wow, you know, I've got to... The, the music, I've got to have that mood in my next movie. <laughs> I got introduced to um, this this young lady from from Taiwan, and um, I heard her stuff, and I went, "Wow!" You know, we sat down together, we went through the movie step by step, and I said, "This is the mood I want here. This is the mood I want there." And also, I got um, introduced by uh, another young lady, um, this French composer, Caroline uh, Miska, and um, she she had some. Her music's incredible, her singing is incredible. I first uh, watched her gigging in London at a few places, pubs and stuff like that. And, um, and I said, yeah, you know, um, I, I pitched her the project. She was excited to come on board. And she also created some great music as well. Incidentally, the score um, won an award at the, at, at the New Wave LA Film Festival. Even in preparing for that role and knowing what um, Carla was going through as well, um, I've been in similar situations as well, and I and I kind of identify with Jason in his. He's a kind of a, a goal getter. He's a very professional person as well, and um, when I was playing, when I was doing, especially doing a scene with um, um, Isora in the car, and her which again, a lot of that um, be became improvised. I really, because of how, just kind of bouncing off from her emotions, uh, that helped me because I really felt desperate for her not to go up and see David. I really felt that this could be the last time I see um, Cara again, you know, that if she goes up there, something really bad is gonna happen. Yeah, I know he's my friend, but I haven't seen him in a long time. So he could be gay? I mean, what anyone... Have you met any of his girlfriends? 
when we're at uni together, yeah. So he's, so he's not gay then, or is he bisexual? No, I'm not saying he's either, either way, I'm saying that I, he could possibly have... What about when he was at uni? Did anything happen? What do you mean, does anything happen? Well, what, does, what do you think I mean, Carl? Did anything happen? Let's stop my time. Him. Yeah, with you and Jason. No, nothing happened. He was my friend, David. He's, he's not... your friend? Yes. So why is he texting you to meet for coffee? Because that's what friends do. They meet up for coffee. They have they have lunch and coffee and things. You know, you have, you have things with your friends, don't you? So he's texting you. Okay, you know what? David, why... Why... There's always why with you. Go through my bag, you go through my bag again. Again, you've been through this. I just, I'm not, I'm not some kind of whore. Why do you treat me like I am? I'm not treating you like I'm Yes, you are. You treat me like I am. Like, I'm not treating you like Yes, you what? are. You treat me like I'm just some, I don't know. I'm I've never asking... done anything to make you not trust me. Why do you do this every time? Carla, I'm just asking you a question. And I know, I'm not asking you questions. I'm getting animated. Don't start with me, okay? I just woke up. It's you. And then I. You didn't go off. Did you already have the part when I auditioned? I think you know. I think I did, yeah. So I I was lucky enough to audition with Lanyo, which helps quite a lot as far as auditioning goes. Um so we just improvised a scene together. I hit him in the in the audition. Yeah, oh gosh, I remember I'm still feeling that now. <laughs> I remember that. As yes. it hit me. As it, I think um we were doing the audition and um Stephen Lloyd Jackson, the director, stepped out of the room and I said, Look, if you want, you can hit me in the scene. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> really, really, hard. Yeah, really, really hard. Like I couldn't. I was freaking like that for about a month. But, yeah. <laughs> it um, but it was good. Yeah, I think it was always really easy working together. I think I don't think we ever had any. No, it was it was it was great. I mean, Zora's trained um, mm. actress and more experienced as well. So um, she gave me some good pointers while whilst we were in certain few variations. I like to do long pre-productions uh, just so that the shoot goes really smooth and we shot this film in 24 days so obviously all the elements we had to make sure they're in place. Um, uh, we didn't have no location manager, you know, we didn't have no casting um, manager or casting director so a lot of the stuff um, uh, essentially Myself and um, um, the other producers, we had to do ourselves. It's very hard to get angry at you. <laughs> such a sweetheart. So I'd, I'd be lying if I said that. Um... I don't know if that's true, but um, yeah, I think I think what was really good with it is because Stephen made it all so because it, a lot of it was just improvised um, scenes, so it was all quite natural. Mm -hmm. So it, there was a natural build to it. It wasn't oh, we had to get here by this line. It was all like, like when we did scenes where we argued, um, it sounded like a proper couple arguing because it was all these like nitpicky things that you're just thinking of off, off the cuff um, that don't necessarily make sense. <laughs> but in your own little like world, they do. So um, I think that helped a lot. It just made it really, really easy. Yeah, it was gradual. It was very, like you say, very organic. It was gradual. Um, yeah. The build up was gradual, wasn't straight in and, you know, it's a very natural, natural process. We were selected um, for the 2011, I think it was a 15th American Black Film Festival, and um, we were invited out there. And um, basically, I had no idea, you know, um, David is Dying was going to pick up one award, much less two, you know. So, you know, of course, we were very excited. We, we were at this huge auditorium. A lot of, this, a lot of stars were there. It was me and Lonyo and our um, handler or at the time. And um, we were just sitting there. They came to Best Actor and, um, you know, Lonyo's name came up and they said, the winner is Lonyo. We went, wow, you know. I said to Lonyo, go for it, man. Go and get that award. You go. And he gave a very emotional speech and it was great. And then they came to the director and I thought, you know, I had my jacket off. I was relaxing. I was enjoying the show because I thought there were a few big Hollywood films there. And I thought, you know, there's no way our little David's going to win this award, you know, for best director. And then when they said the name Stephen Lloyd Jackson, I thought, wow, you know, incredible. You know, I kind of froze for a second and I put on my jacket and I walked up to the front and it was it was a great it was a great experience. 
And, um, you know, it just goes to show, um, you know, these little small independent films, you know, we could take on the big Hollywood stuff, yeah. I think by the time we got to that scene, I actually think we've been filming for a fair amount of time. So luckily we were already quite comfortable with each other. So I think it was just kind of like, we were already really comfortable. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't anything, I wasn't nervous about it. No, I think, I think... um... I'd done a few love scenes with other actresses in the film already. Oh, yeah. So, and they were my first ever love scenes as well. So I was probably nervous when I did them, but by the time I got to be dealing with Azora, it was like, you know, just relaxed and... Yeah, it was, yeah. I did forget quite often that the sound guy was right behind the bed. And, uh... <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was right in my I ear. Because I could see. So, yeah. and then he'd like pop up and I'd be like, mm. um, but it was, it was fine. It was, yeah. yeah. It wasn't really uncomfortable. Um, I have filmed um, in the States, in Los Angeles, and, and that's cool. Um, but it's always a kind of like a, um, it's kind of surreal in LA. And there's always that kind of like a, a bit of gloss to it. Um, whereas in London, it's more down to earth. It's more real. And, uh, and I like that. When, when we was filming down in um, Brick Lane, um, I was mistaken for um, Denzel Washington a few times. Well, when I was playing Roxanne, there's a scene where she has uh, several male visitors and I just met all the, all the guys I was doing the scenes with that day. And so there was a lot of like, just very like, oh, hello. And then like just kissing someone <laughs> for like 15 minutes. Uh, the taxi sh- scene on Brick Lane where I'm chasing a taxi. And I'm shouting, you know, stop, stop, Carla. And uh, a shopkeeper ran out because he thought, nah, I'd been, you know, I'd lost my wallet or been, someone had robbed me. So he started chasing the, <laughs> the cab with me. It was like, no. The uh, art gallery scene, though. I think that day I was absolutely on fire um, because there was loads of people there. Um, and I'm, I'm fairly quick-witted, you know, I like to think so. And I got a chance to show that off because that was just bang, 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 bang. I've always known I wanted to do something creative from when I was four years old because I would always, um, you know, act um, as a little girl and play different characters. I would love to do um, Hannibal, Hannibal of Carthage. Um, uh, it's a character I know a lot about and very intrigued in how he challenged the Roman Empire. I'd love to do some comedy, just any comedy. <laughs> um, or something like, I want to do everything, something action-y or, I don't know, anything, everything. I ride and I dance a lot, um, tango, ballroom, Latin. And there was days when we were filming and Stephen would really say nothing to me and I'd be like, you know, is this, is it not, he's not even saying it's good or bad and then he'd pull me aside and just go, look, if there's anything wrong, I'll tell you. Seeing films I'm in always makes me incredibly nervous. I'd love to play a spy, like a James Bond type character. Um, that's just a kid in me, you know, guns and fast cars and exotic locations. But I think also um, I'd like to maybe play um, a, a, a baddie, a baddie. I, I don't really want to, yeah. And being creative. Worst part? Getting up early in the morning. <laughs> I just watch films differently now where I just sit and watch and be entertained. I actually watch for things that people do when they're not talking, for example, or... Sometimes watch movies with the sound down and just watch mannerisms, you know, because you, you, you never stop, you know, learning. Sub Productions is a unique company in that it takes on stories that um, um, it's about people from the, the African diaspora living and working in London. Um, you know, the, the UK film industry is um, so much full of... of um, um, gangster stories where, where, where it is stereotypically associated with black people being in gangs and ghetto and a lot of negative stereotypes. So I thought, you know, I, I need to make a difference on this stance. So I thought I'll do stories, although it's harrowing and intense and deep and dark, but yet I hope it gives a lot of promise and insight to people from the African diaspora and for mass people all around the world who could look on London and say, you know, not all um, um, black people are from the ghetto or, or they're dealing in drugs or guns and stuff like that. I wanted to broaden the horizon of the thinking person so that they could 
they could see that from the stories I tell.